Photons. Photons are eternal. Photons are outside of time. Photons are never born, or the photon would experience time. When you see a photon, my suggestion is that you are seeing a photon in pair conversion, creating an electron-positron pair. Positron is an anti-electron. Photons are the singularity before the Big Bang. Quote, from How Do Photons Experience Time from Forbes. Yet despite this incredible journey, the photon itself experiences none of what we know as time. It simply is emitted and then instantaneously is absorbed, experience the entirety of its travels through space and literally no time. Given everything that we know, a photon never ages in any way at all. I take that a little further. My suggestion is that photons and electron positrons, or anti-electrons, are the same thing. They are two versions of the same thing. Consider the following. The photon is a particle of energy. The electron positron are mass. The photon displays more wave properties, whereas the electron positron displays more particle properties. Photons create electron-positron pairs. Electron-positron pair can annihilate into energy photons. Let's rephrase. Photons turn into electron-positron pairs under certain conditions. Electrons and positrons turn into photons under certain conditions. Photons is the speed of light version. Positron and electron are the space-time version. Photons have no mass but are still affected by gravity. Why? Suggestion that when photons are electron-positron pairs, both the electron and positron have mass, and that explains why gravity affects them. See post on gravity or anti-gravity. The movement of electrons causes both the creation and destruction of photons. Both photons and electron positrons behave as a wave or particle, but never both at the same time. Photons pop up out of nothing, but always match the exact energy needed for a quantum jump. Photons pop out of nothing and create electron and positron pairs that are entangled. Virtual particles pop up out of nothing and create virtual electron-positron pairs that are entangled too. <coughs> Photon energy can create mass and pair conversion of electron and positron. The annihilation of the mass of electron and positron create photon energy. Two pure energy photons can create mass of electron-positron pairs and pair conversion. The mass of electron-positron pairs in annihilation turns to complete pure energy. Photons are energy that travels at the speed of light, but electron-positron pairs are mass, so they should travel slower than the speed of light, and they do. They should also be larger than photons, and they are. Quantum jump is when an electron takes in energy to jump to a higher state. Suggestion is you can substitute an electron positron for the pair for the photon. I'm going to skip this part. Suggestion that if photons through pair conversion create all fundamental particles, see my post, then every electron is entangled with a positron and all particles are entangled. Suggestion that like entangled particles can switch spin, so entangled electron and positron particles can switch charge. That means electron can switch to a positron and back, in, back at any quantum event. Some thoughts. The fact that pair conversion is more active at higher temperatures is a clue to what could have happened at post-Big Bang temperatures. Baba scattering supports 
that photons and electron-positron pairs are different versions of the same thing. Quote from Secret Melody by Thuan. In the past, the appearance of infinite values has always signaled a breakdown of our theory, theories rather than extreme behavior on the part of the universe. It has been a sign of lack of imagination on our part rather than a property of nature itself. My suggestion is that the infinite values are correct and that renormalization was a mistake. The infinities are correct. Follow that and everything starts being a unified theory, not a patchwork of solutions on separate, specific problems.